Today we're going to be completing part three for the classic tuxedo uh, construction for the Trent Osborne doll. In a previous video, we've already constructed the actual uh, tuxedo trousers. Another one also showed the uh, construction of the mock vest. And on the channel itself, there's a couple of different dress shirt patterns, one that doesn't include the riser and another one that includes the two part sleeve. So if you need to see construction of those pieces, che please check for the link in the description below. So let's quickly observe what the pattern pieces are before we get started. So we actually have two tail pieces, a right and left. We have the front jacket, we have the jacket lining, the jacket front facing, the sleeve, uh, the side back, and the actual back section. So once we get all these pieces assembled, we will actually have completed that fantastic look for Trent and the pattern will be available shortly. The first step in the construction is to take the front jacket piece and sew that center back neck seam. The next step is to take the back and the side back sections and clip into that curved edge on both pieces and then get it sewn together with right sides together. With the side back section sewn to the back and having those seams pressed open, we're gonna go ahead and sew that center back seam. So referring back to the actual pattern piece, you'll notice that there's actually an area that you need to pivot to get the um, back section sewn to the front section and then this back collar sewn to the back of the actual jacket. So note on the pattern where this pivot actually takes place. At this edge, you're gonna wanna reinforce with a few stitches, um, less than a quarter of an inch so that those stitches aren't sewn. And then you're gonna take a little clip in towards the actual dot on the pattern piece. Once you've reinforced at those corners, you're just gonna take your scissors and clip in towards the dot as indicated on the pattern. And that's not a full quarter inch clip, it's just a little clip and that's gonna help ease that uh, pivot right there to the collar. So now we're gonna take it over to the ironing board and we're gonna get this pinned together to the back of the actual jacket. We're gonna match the center back seam and the center back seam of the collar. And then we're actually gonna pin it together, matching the shoulders and pivoting right at that inside shoulder corner. With the front and the back pinned together at the shoulder seam, we're just gonna sew from one armhole opening around the collar edge to the other armhole opening. Just take your time at that pivot. And if you have a needle down position on your sewing machine, that's a really, really good feature to use for that actual pivoting area. Let's get that press and I'll show you how well that pivot turned right there at the shoulder. And here you can see the pivot right there at the inside of the shoulder. 
So that turned out pretty good on both sides. So for the next step, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna sew the front and back together at the side seam. Now this is one part that often confuses people if they're not instruction readers because the sleeves for this tuxedo uh, jacket are actually sewn in the round. So for the next step, it's right sides together and we're sewing the side seams. Next, we're gonna prepare the sleeves for the actual tuxedo. In order to do this, we need to do three steps. We're gonna run a gather or an ease stitch at the sleeve cap. We're gonna turn the hem edge of the um, sleeve up a quarter inch and press it. And we're also gonna sew the uh, side seam of the sleeve or the underarm seam of the sleeve. So let me start with that base stitch, the press, and then sew it together. Then we'll get that seam pressed open and we'll get it attached to the actual jacket by sewing in the round. Now we're just gonna sew it with right sides together and sew that sleeve seam. The thing you wanna do here though, is you wanna open up that fold so that it has a nice crisp edge when you fold the cuff back under. All right, so now we have to actually pin the sleeves to the jacket and sew them together in the round. And if you just take a little time to understand what you're trying to do here, it makes it a whole lot easier. The first time I did it, I thought it was insane. Um, but with each time that I've set sleeves this way, it becomes a little bit easier. So this is the inside of our actual jacket, as you can see, and this is the back seam. So what I want you to notice is that we turn the sleeves right side out and we're actually gonna put them to the inside of the jacket and we're gonna sew this direction or in the round um, from the inside of the jacket with a sleeve on the inside of the jacket. So in order to set it, what you wanna do is you wanna identify that back seam. That is not the underarm seam of the sleeve, but actually the back seam. So when you see this seam where the side back is sewn to the back, that is where you wanna connect the seam of the sleeve to the seam of the actual jacket. So you're gonna take that base stitch that you did at the sleeve cap, and you're just gonna gently pull it. Now we're not trying to create any gathers here, we're just trying to create a rounding. And then you wanna make sure that this lines up with the back of the jacket. So I want this side of the sleeve to go with this side of the jacket. So once I match those seams from the inside, hopefully you can see it, there's this uh, seam and here's the seam. That's where I'm actually gonna start to pin the jacket. So I'm gonna try to get uh, close to the camera so you can see seam to seam at the back of the jacket and that's where I'm going to put my first pin. Now I'm going to pin my pins in towards the bodice as opposed to out. That way even though I'll have to be careful not to run them over when I sew they won't be in my way as I sew. So I'm just going to touch both pieces of material together and line it up on the edge and walk it around that sleeve opening. And once I have all the pins in place we'll take it over to the sewing machine and actually get it sewn. So as you go around the shoulder seam, you're gonna to wanna to press that seam open with your fingers and then just keep going. So I wouldn't use a bunch of pins cause you don't wanna to have to worry about running them over but enough that your sleeve isn't gonna move. So as we keep going, we're lining up the raw edge of the inside of the sleeve with the uh, side of the jacket.
Now on the actual pattern piece, you'll see a dot and that's gonna be where the uh, sleeve meets the shoulder. And there's a dot on the pattern piece where the underarm seam uh, meets the actual side seam. And that brings us to the last piece. We're gonna press that seam open with our fingers as well. And that should do it. And I'll show you, try to show you the inside of this. When I get it all set. All right, so as you can see, if we open it, see if you can see it, we have it pinned all the way around. We match the uh, side back seam to the actual back of the sleeve seam. We match the dot on the pattern to the top seam. So I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and I'm actually gonna lay it open here and sew all the way around. And hopefully if everything works out good, these two seams will line up perfectly. So then I'll do the second sleeve and we'll move on to the next step. So let's see how we did. Hopefully you can see from this angle and this light. We're gonna pull the jacket to the outside. We're checking the seams, as you can see. That's the top seam, everything looks good. The back seam lines up with the back of the sleeve seam perfectly, which I love. I don't see any crazy tucks or puckers, which is also an advantage. So now that we have that set, we'll do the exact same thing on the other side and then we'll get started on those lining pieces. So here we have our jacket construction so far, and I think it's coming together quite well. Um, we have the sleeves set in, and once we get those sleeves set in, the rest of the jacket construction is pretty easy. Um, off camera, I already completed the lining for the jacket, which is the exact same steps as the exterior portion with the exception of the fact that it has a side front lining section and a side in a front facing section. So that's the only difference in the construction up to this point. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn up the uh, lining edge one quarter inch and give it a press. And then I'm gonna pin the lining to the jacket and get it sewn up both front openings and around that neck edge. So those are the next steps and we'll move on from there to the actual tails to the tuxedo coat. Once you have uh, both the lining and the jacket sewn together, you just wanna quickly check both sides before making any clips in towards that seam allowance. And if everything looks good, then on the curved edge, you'll take in some clips. If you need to trim, trim the seam down, you can do it now. We'll turn it right side out and we'll give it an actual press. So 
here is the jacket so far and it's turned and pressed. The lining is installed and the very next step is to get the tails constructed. So I'm very pleased with the way it's looking so far. Um, I want to make sure that I, that seam right there at the side of the collar does uh, not show from the front of the jacket. So I'm going to make that adjustment with my iron before I actually get everything sewn together. So setting the jacket coat uh, aside for a moment and looking at the tails, the rest of the construction is going to be super easy. All we have to do is sew the darts in uh, both tail sections as well as the lining pieces. And then we'll sew around the outside edge of both of the tails. And then we'll actually fold them one over the other and get them sewn around the waist. So let me go ahead and get the dart sewn first and then we'll do the uh, external portion of the tail sewing next. After you have the lining sewn to the actual tail, you're gonna trim that seam and clip into the curved edge of the seam allowance, turn it right side out and give it a press. Now that we have the tails uh, all sewn together and turned and pressed, the next step is going to be just to run a base stitch across the top to hold the lining to the actual outside of the tail. And then we'll get it pinned to the waist of the actual tuxedo coat and we'll sew that waist seam. We are really, really close to finishing this project. I hope you're finding value with it. If you are, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and let's move on to the next step from here. So I have the tails pinned to the actual jacket and I just wanna to draw to your attention what's actually happening here. So first of all, you're keeping the jacket lining free from the actual pinning process. You're lining up the curved edge of the actual tail to the finished edge of the front of the jacket. And as you pin it across, you're gonna notice that this one, or what I consider at this angle to be seen, the left tail is actually uh, folded over or crossing over the right tail for about a quarter inch fold at the center back of the jacket. Now the right tail is actually lining up with that center back seam of the jacket and then the front edge is also lining up here. So now that we have everything pinned in place, let's carefully sew that waist seam together and make, making sure that we don't catch the lining in the process and then we're just about two steps shy of finishing the whole project. So let's check that front section and see how it turned out. And I think it looks pretty great. So as you can see, the tail here is lining up with the, directly with that back seam and we have a fold over. So there's a little bit of uh, overlap happening there, which I think looks great. The front edge is lined up with the front of the fitted portion of the jacket. So what we need to do now is we need to go over to the ironing board and press this seam up. And then we need to fold that lining down and hand finish the lining to the inside of that waist seam.
All right, now that we have the waist uh, lining sewn, the next step and the final step before we actually fit it to the doll is gonna be to sew the lining of the sleeve at the sleeve cuff. All right, we have all the hand finishing done, the final uh, steps for the jacket. I'm gonna give it a final press and we're gonna get a fit to our Trent Osborne doll and see how this classic tuxedo look finally turned out. This concludes the construction of the classic tuxedo pattern for Trent Osborne. If you're interested in seeing this pattern that's available for other dolls, we have it also for Matt O'Neill, Peter Pevensey, and Mortimer Mort. Thank you so much for following me along today. If you have any questions, please list them in the comment section below, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.